Hey everybody, my name is Tiger Bai. I am a yoga instructor and an Oxygen Advantage Master Instructor, and I am so delighted to be here on the Ripple Yoga Wear channel. I love practicing yoga and breathing in my Ripple clothes. They are so comfortable on and off the mat, and it's really a pleasure to be here to share a very key part of the kind of breathing I teach with you. So, a bit of background about today's topic, which is kumbhaka or kumbhak, which really means breath retention. So the most ancient Vedic texts really state that pranayama, yogic breathing, isn't pranayama unless it includes kumbhaka, unless it includes these points of breath retention. Why would that be? That seems very counterintuitive to have retaining the breath, holding the breath, be a key part of a breathing practice. Wouldn't you want to breathe more to oxygenate the body more? Turns out that the exact opposite is true. Actually, when we can practice holding our breath and eliciting feelings of breathlessness, it's actually allowing levels of carbon dioxide to rise in the blood, which through a series of chemical processes is what allows oxygen to leave the blood and actually get into our cells and get into our tissues. Carbon dioxide, not oxygen, is our primary stimulus to breathe. So whenever you feel like you've been really working hard or maybe you're panicked or anxious and you feel these feelings of breathlessness, that's actually an indication that levels of carbon dioxide have risen in the blood. So today's practice, our Kumbhaka practices, are really about training our tolerance to carbon dioxide because once we have a higher threshold for it, we will be able to be less stimulated by stress and anxiety. We'll be able to be less breathless during physical exercise. So Kumbhaka, there are many, many uh, practices of holding the breath. Today, I want to show you an easy and approachable practice, a practice that you can use for a bit of more challenge to train that tolerance to carbon dioxide, and then an upregulating, energizing practice for when you need a little bit of a pick-me-up. Something to note is that breath holding is not safe if you are pregnant or have any other serious health conditions. It can elicit uh, feelings of hyper excitability, which might exacerbate some of those things. So be mindful, be safe. And if at any point you're practicing Kumbhaka breath holds and you feel lightheaded, dizzy, or it's just not working for your body, please stop and breathe normally and come back to baseline. So the first thing I want to play with before we get into any breath holding practices, I really want to show you what your level of carbon dioxide tolerance is so that you can really start to measure the progress of practicing these breath holds throughout the weeks. So there is a very handy test you can do to measure your level of carbon dioxide tolerance. It is from the Oxygen Advantage developed by Patrick McCune, and this is called the BOLT score, B-O-L-T. It stands for Body Oxygen Level Test, and it really is a snapshot into how comfortable your body is with the gas carbon dioxide, which is our primary stimulus to breathe. It's what makes us feel breathless. It is what makes us want to take a breath in after we've held our breath because those CO2 levels will rise in the blood. So the BOLT score, B-O-L-T, super simple. All you need is a timer to time yourself because the level of seconds you will measure is your BOLT score. The number of seconds that you can hold your breath for comfortably is your BOLT score. I'll tell you a little bit about the measurement after we practice it. So get your timer ready. Once you have that, take a few regular breaths in and out through the nose, just bringing the body back to baseline. When you're ready, you'll exhale the breath out through your nose. Prepare to take a full breath in through the nose, nice and quiet. Full breath out, nice and quiet. At the bottom of the exhale, you'll gently plug the nostrils and start your timer. And you'll let 
this feeling of air hunger rise until you feel the first definite desire to breathe. So hold your breath. And then once you get that little tingling sensation that says, oh, I really need to take a breath in, you'll take a breath in gently and look at the number of seconds that took. And that is your bolt score. This is not an opportunity for you to hold your breath for as long as possible. That will come later. <laughs> it's a different test. Right now, it's just that first definite desire to breathe. How many seconds does that take? That is your bolt score. If your bolt score is 25 or above, you're in really good shape. There's a very good chance that you are already a functional breather. You already have a pretty good tolerance to carbon dioxide compared to most people. If you're anywhere from 15 to 20, not bad, still some work to do. What I'll show you later will really help train that tolerance and get that score higher. If you're 15 or below, suggest we have some work to do, but don't worry. Just by practicing breath holding, you can get better at your carbon dioxide tolerance. And it's important to remember also, if your bolt score is 15 or lower, some of these breath holding practices that I'll suggest might not be right for you. They might be a little bit too intense. So if your bullet score is 15 or below, this first practice I'm going to show you will be really the one for you. If your bullet score is 20 or higher, you can start floating with some stronger breath holds. So let's get started. One of my favorite breath holding practices that is super approachable is just called many small breath holds popularized by the oxygen advantage method. It's really like the bread and butter of breath holds because even if you have a high or a low tolerance to carbon dioxide, this is something that you can do to soothe the nervous system and come back into balance. So either sit well or stand well, or you could also do this laying down. Just be in a position where you have a nice tall spine, natural curves of the spine, you're not holding any tension. It's not a forceful labored position. All you have to do is exhale the breath out through the nose. Take a regular inhale through the nose, a regular exhale through the nose, and then pinch the nose and hold for a count of five, four, three, two, one. Inhale and exhale. Continue to breathe normally for about 10 seconds here. You want the breath to be light, slow, deep, and quiet. And when you're ready, another breath in, quiet through the nose, another breath out, quiet through the nose. Pinch the nose and hold gently for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale and exhale normally for about 10 seconds. We wanna be very gentle when holding the sides of the nose. It's really just to prevent any air coming into the lungs while we're holding the breath. When you're ready, again, inhale and exhale. Keep the jaw and the face soft. Pinch the nose and hold gently for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale and exhale. So you would continue that process for anywhere from one to three minutes. It's a really nice thing to do when you just need to calm yourself back down, come back to baseline, super approachable. If you find that five seconds is too much for you, you can always break it down to three or four seconds or maybe even bump it up to six or seven. The goal of the many small breath holds is just to be a light, very teaspoon of air hunger, nothing too intense at all. If you do want to get into a more challenging practice and really start to train your tolerance to carbon dioxide to become less breathless, to deliver more oxygen to your tissues, to be able to have a higher arousal threshold, so becoming stressed less easily, You'll practice some more medium or stronger breath holds. When you're ready, exhale gently the air out through the nose. Inhale, slow and gentle through the nose. Exhale, slow and gentle, and then pinch and hold the nose, holding the breath for really as long as you can until you feel a strong desire to breathe in. So let the jaw and face be soft. The air hunger will start to build. You'll start to feel like you need to take a breath in. 
Let your body relax into the growing sensation of air hunger. And when you feel that strong desire to breathe in, you'll remove your hand, gentle breath in, gentle breath out. Try to minimize your breathing, make it light, slow, and deep. Within six breaths, you should be able to come back to baseline nice and slow. If after the breath hold, you feel like you really need to gasp for air, you've held the breath too long, come back to a slow nasal breath, resting for about 60 seconds here. You can find a count of five in and five out, just in your head to come back to baseline. I'll show you one more time. Ideally, you want to do about three to five of those. So once you've come back to a normal baseline breath in the body, the mind has recovered. Again, exhale gently through the nose. Inhale, fill the lungs slowly through the nose. Soft face and jaw, exhale, not a forceful exhale. Lock the nostrils, hold the breath. Allow your body to soften around the rising feeling of air hunger. The air hunger will continue to build. And once you feel a real strong desire to breathe in, you'll remove the hand, gentle breath in, as gentle as you can, gentle breath out. Try to minimize your breathing within six breaths, making it light, slow, and deep. taking about a minute or so to come back to baseline before repeating up to five times. The last practice I want to show you is a much more excitatory practice. It's much more upregulating. This would be maybe in the morning when you feel sluggish or tired. Important to know that if you are somebody who is quite anxious or is prone to panic attacks, this is not the breath for you. This will uh, induce hyperventilation before we start a breath hold. Hyperventilation is really just breathing in excess of metabolic requirements, but of course hyperventilation can influence anxiety, and anxiety of course can cause hyperventilation. So if you're somebody that has um, a bit of anxiety and it's something you're working on, I would skip this one and just practice on the smaller breath holds. Otherwise, I'll show you how to do this one. It involves taking 20 big breaths in and out through the nose. I'll guide you. And those 20 breaths are full deep breaths. So it's, it is a hyperventilation. You do not need to be breathing this much on a normal basis. And then after the last exhale, you're going to hold your breath by closing the nostrils. And you're going to be amazed by how long you'll be able to hold the breath because you've offloaded all of that carbon dioxide, which is our primary stimulus to breathe. And it will take longer for those levels to rise back up in the blood. So if you were to get a timer, you would notice that this breath hold is probably a bit longer than if you were to do it without the hyperventilatory breath. And just remember when you're pinching the sides of the, of the nose that it's very gentle. I even sometimes like to take my thumbs and just gently plug the nostrils. You don't want to be pressing on the tissue on the sides of the nose too hard, okay? Very good, let's get started. When you're ready, gently exhale the breath out through the nose, sitting well. You can also do this lying down, of course. And we'll begin. Big breath in, big breath out. Big breath in, big breath out. In and out. Full big breaths. In and out. Breath in. Breath out. In and out. In and out. Keep going. In and out. In 
and out. In and out. Halfway there. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Breath in. Breath out. Breath in. Breath out. Keep going. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Hold the breath. Close the nostrils. Close your eyes if that feels comfortable. You're holding the breath. Let the body relax. Let the face be soft. Let the teeth be separated. Press the tongue to the roof of the mouth. You'll notice it'll take longer for those feelings of air hunger to rise after all of that big breathing. And you'll continue holding your breath as you feel this feeling of air hunger start to rise, relax into the sensation. And once you feel a strong desire to breathe in after a bit, you'll release your hand, you'll take a slow breath in, slow breath out. Hands on the lap, you're welcome to close the eyes. If you're lying down, just relax into the floor. Just observe. Notice what you notice, feel what you feel. Do you feel uh, like there's any buzzing going around in the body? Do you feel warm? Do you feel the upregulating power of that breath and that long breath hold? This is such a great practice when you need a boost of energy. A really great practice to exhibit the power of how quickly the breath can change our nervous system through accessing our body's biochemistry. So good. So those are three Kumbhaka practices, three breath holding practices that you can give uh, a try bringing them into your regular pranayama or into your yoga practice. Once again, we have the many small breath holds, safe for most people, very gentle. We have the training of carbon dioxide tolerance with those longer breath holds and those rests in between. And then we have this uplifting, exciting, energizing breath hold after a series of hyperventilatory breaths. Remember, you never want to do any kind of breathing that makes you feel too lightheaded or too dizzy. It's always safe to just come back to a baseline breath when you're practicing Kumbhaka and it feels too much. You're always welcome to lay down too. So take care of yourselves. Give this a try. You will end up oxygenating your body much more by playing with those levels of carbon dioxide rising in the blood. If you want to learn more about the science behind these techniques, you can check out the Ripple Yoga Wear website's blog. I have a blog post all about Kumbhaka, just giving some more detail uh, regarding the science behind all this fun breathing. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.